The Pali word metta is related to the word mitta, which means friend. Metta is the quality of a good friend, which is what you're trying to develop as you develop thoughts of goodwill. Now, there are all kinds of friends. There are true friends and false friends. There is skillful friendship and unskillful friendship. And it's obvious, that, of course, that the Buddha wants us to develop the qualities of true and skillful friends. So it's good to stop and think about what that means. We're going to be a friend to the world. We want to be a good friend. The Buddha recognized two types of worthwhile friends. The first is the loyal friend, as in that chant we have, the one who's helpful, the one who shares in your sorrows and joys, the one who points you to worthwhile things, the one who's sympathetic. The examples the Buddha gives are someone who's helpful, as in when you're being heedless, he protects you. When you're being heedless, he or she will protect your belongings. When you meet with misfortune, this friend doesn't abandon you. And when you need a loan for business, the friend will give you twice what you ask for. That's a nice little detail. One who shares in your sorrows and joys is basically someone who sticks with you. When things go up, when things go down, the, the, the friend is still there. The one who points you to worthwhile things is one who tries to keep you from doing unskillful things, get you established in doing skillful things, shares whatever knowledge he or she has, particularly knowledge of the Dharma, and points the way to heaven. In other words, your loyal friend is not just a yes man or a yes woman. If you're doing something wrong, a, a good loyal friend will point it out. I want to encourage you to do something right. As for one who's so sympathetic, as when you meet with misfortune, your friend doesn't delight in that. When you meet with good fortune, the friend does delight. When other people are criticizing you, the true friend will try to stop them. And when other people are praising you, your friend will rejoice along with them. That's the quality of a loyal friend. You're being loyal, as I said, it's not just going along with whatever you want to do. Someone has your true best interests at heart and is willing to make sacrifices. That friend who shares in your sorrows and joys, as the Buddha said, would be even willing to give his or her life for your sake. But at the same time, knows when you're doing something wrong and is willing to tell you. That, he says, is the kind of friend you want to cherish. The other kind of friend the Buddha recognizes as worthwhile is what he calls the admirable friend, the Kalyana Mitta. And this essentially is someone who has good qualities and who encourages you to develop those good qualities as well. They list four. There's conviction, which means conviction in the Buddha's awakening. That he really was awakened, and he did it through his own efforts, and he knew what he was talking about. Then not only he, but anyone who develops the same qualities can develop awakening, too. The admirable friend is virtuous, holds by the five precepts, is generous, is willing to share material things, knowledge, help advice, forgiveness, and is discerning. Here we're talking about someone who's more than just an ordinary, everyday good person, but someone who really can see into the causes of suffering and their end. Now, the ideal way to have friendship with this sort of person is to engage this person in discussion with these qualities and try to emulate them. So basically, when you're spreading thoughts of goodwill, 
hoping for all beings to be happy. You realize that this is not a prayer. It's a resolution on your part. It's part of right resolve. That you want to act in a way that's harm harmful to no one and actually helpful when possible. But it's not just being nice. To be a true friend, you have to be a virtuous person. You have to be a generous person. And that means there's <clears throat> no, no room for, say, compassion that breaks the precepts. That was a principle that crept into the, into the Buddhism long after the Buddha passed away. The idea that somehow the needs of compassion might require that you break a precept. The Buddha nev never recognized that as a legitimate argument. Because it's always very short-sighted. You break a precept, and that's a bad example. And you can dress up compassion in any way you want to make it seem worthwhile. And that becomes an easy excuse for breaking the precepts. This is why in the Karnaniyameta Sutta the Buddha talks about being virtuous as a prerequisite for developing goodwill. And so that your goodwill isn't hypocritical. And so that you have a good idea of what it means. If you want to be a friend of the world, you need to have principles. You're not uncritical. In fact, there are times when your friend is doing something wrong and you've got to be able to tell your friend. You have to know how to do it. Find the right time and right place. As the Buddha noted, there's a right time to say pleasant things and there's a wrong time to say pleasant things. Just as there's a right time to say unpleasant things and a wrong time to say unpleasant things. This keeps coming back to the principle of karma. When we're wishing that beings be happy, we're wishing that they develop the causes for happiness. Now, how are you going to help? One is to develop the causes of happiness within yourself. True happiness, of course. Happiness that harms no one. So you can be a good example. If you try to tell the people to act in a skillful way, but you're not acting in a skillful way, it has no power. This is why the practice of goodwill goes along with virtue, goes along with all the rest of the practice. So when we chant these chants in the evening and the morning, let them go beyond being just chants. Make them genuine resolves on your part and express them as a true friend in your thoughts, in your words, and your deeds. This is how we get, get along in the world and do more than just get along. This is how we make our resolves something of genuine benefit. We get along and we get better. That's what it means to be a true friend. <laughs>